Thank you, Lisa, for the introduction. So hi, everybody. My name is Chris. And what a pleasure, pleasure it is for me to showcase some knowledge that I was exposed to throughout my training as part of cohort five of the Dari School. During this period, we received Alteryx and Tableau training, but specifically for today's session, I was asked to showcase some Alteryx design and functionality. Without any further ado, I present to you the download tool. So today, data is being collected everywhere. With Alteryx, you can incorporate not only various sources of private data collected into a single workflow, but also enrich your data through external sources. Usually, this external data is downloaded as, as a file, but in this case, it needs to be manually updated. But using the download tool, you can connect directly to the web source to have it updated whenever you run your workflow. So today, I have some objectives that we want to cover, just so that I can pass some knowledge on to you. So for this short training session, I want you all to get three takeaways. To start, it is important to recognize that downloading data has a process to it. And once you learn the simple steps, you can adjust them for more complex use cases. Secondly, I will showcase the tools, especially the text to columns tool, the JSON pass tool, which are instrumental to the download process. The last point I want to share is the ease in which you can use downloaded data to support business decisions. Let's get into the process. So the download process. Generally, there are four steps in the download process, which have been annotated on the, which will be annotated on the following workflows. The first step is to understand what data you want. And for the purposes of API calling, you will need to read the documentation to know what endpoint you want. For the purpose of web scraping, you would want to open the developer tools and observe the HTML that needs to be passed. The next step is to open Alteryx and drag a text input tool onto the canvas, specifying the link to what you would like to download, and if necessary, any credentials that you may need, such as an API key. Step three involves configuring the download tool itself. Usually, you will only need to specify the column of the URL link, but you also might want to change the request type or put a header. The final step would be to tabulate the data through parsing and data preparation tools. Now that we have um, a basic overview of the process, we turn to the tool itself. The download tool consists of four tabs. Starting with the basic tab, you must select the field which contains the URL link, otherwise known as an endpoint for APIs. The download tool by default has the encode URL text selected, and this relates to the unsafe ASCII characters. But most generally, I have never deselected this option. Within the basic tab, you can specify whether you want to download text or a blob. A blob is basically a multimedia form like an image or a sound. You may also select the data to be downloaded um, to a file. Personally, I've never used the, the file feature and I don't see any glaring benefits to it unless what you are downloading is something that changes and you want to keep a record of it. The second tab entitled headers is useful when your downloading process involves credentials such as a user key. These can either be set as constant values or from a field. I found these are usually not required for a download but it's good to know that you can modify the HTTP requests sent by a web, uh, a web request. The third tab, entitled Payload, enables the user to change the HTTP, HTTP request. At default, this is set to Get, but it also allows you to Post, Put, Delete, Head, or even a custom view. For the purposes of this training session, We'll be focusing on bringing new data in via the GET request. Um, there's also a final tab. This is optional, but this relates more to the security of the download. When making requests, it is important to be executed in good faith. You, you do not want to be overloading somebody else's server. And that is one reason why companies such as Google have limits to the number of requests that you can make to an API. 
if you are misusing the website, you may be blocked from downloading further data. So hopefully all the boring theory is out of the way. The remainder of the session will be showcasing you some examples with me connecting to the YouTube API, SA crime data, and some web scraping of some super coach data. I'll also have an example from some outro where you might want to use the headers tab. But yeah, let's get into the crime data. So now we're in Alteryx and documented is each of the steps in the downloading process. So starting with step one, we can see that it's important to read the documentation or use the developer tools before we start downloading the data to have a brief idea of what we want from the data. So if we go into the SA crimes example, what we can see is the crime statistics for 2018 to 2019. There is an option to download the data or to access the API itself. It's important to have a look at the data structure before you start accessing the API or read the documentation in order to see what data you're, you're collecting, see any parameters or any limitations to it. Uh, if you're unaware, a parameter acts just like a filter would in Alteryx, so you can specify what part of the data from the API that you'd like. So if we click on that access API screen, we, we turn to this page here, which gives us some example queries that we can make for the API, and also it gives us the documentation up the top here. But let's say we, we skip the documentation reading part, and we go straight into the query part. So what we can notice in these example queries is they both contain this resource ID, which is basically the, um, the year that we want to we wanna study. So if we just copy that URL link and that resource link, and we say, um, I don't want a limit, so we'll just exclude that limit part of the argument. So we'll copy that into a text input call here. And then step three would be to configure the, the download tool itself. So what we have is that URL link, otherwise known as an endpoint, and each of the other configuration options are the same. It's just a basic API calling exercise. What the output of the download tool has is a downloaded data, which contains all the data that you want to pass out, and also a bit of information about whether the request was successful or not. We then turn our attention to step four. As the API is in JSON format, we can use the JSON pass tool and the downloaded data, which creates two um, columns, the column names and also the download data stream. So after this download data string, we can filter out the data which is unnecessary for our, um, for our analysis. For example, we have result resource ID, so we don't want to return that code back, but we also don't want to return those other links and stuff like that. Then we have the text to columns tool, which will break down this JSON name into the delivery and comments to give that to give that JSON name for which is the column headers. We then cross tab the tool in order to make those column headers into columns and there we've got the downloaded data from the SA Crimes data. But there's something that you might notice. So there's only 100 records of crimes in this period. You might be wondering to yourself that surely that doesn't sound right. So we go back to documentation. Here's the documentation string here. It starts off with um, just a, a list of all the sections of the headers. And I've searched for limit as we didn't get the intended results. And what we have here is a list of parameters with a definition of each of them. And it states that by default, if it's if the limit's not called, then you will receive 100 records, which is what we received. But there's also an upper limit of 32,000 records that you can call in one API. So maybe you might need to do this process over several days if you want the full data, or be more selective in the data which is returned with that need, that limit. So yeah, that's the first example of API calling. What we have is a very simple workflow here. 
So we can we can turn our attentions onto the next example, which will be the YouTube API. What we mentioned in our first part of this exercise is there's also instances where you might need to have a some sort of credential. And in this case here, what we will have is an API key. So without showing the API key, what we have is that query that we had beforehand, and we also have some verification from Google. So if we go into the documentation for Google, we have this guide here. Google provides a video which you can watch that shows you how to access the API key. And yeah, just go through steps before we start accessing the actual API itself. So for my example today, I wanted to get a list of videos that were relating to NRL Supercoach, which is basically a game that supports people that like NRL play. So we go into the different types of API calls that we can have using the reference list here. So we have a whole list of types of references that we can call the API. And um, as we're looking for a list of videos, we go into the search tool method. So the search result can say the information, and yeah, it will just give us a, a list of videos in our instance that contain the words NRL Supercoach. So what we can do is go into the list itself. What it will give us is um, some examples, but it also, Google has this try this API. So what we can do is give an example. So currently this model, this, this URL string is set to find videos that contain surfing in the key. Something that's good about this Google API is that you can you can change it yourself with this interface and then you can directly copy that top link there and put it into the Ultrix Designer text input tool, which is what we've done. So we copied that query there. And at the end of the query, we had our API key in a different column, which we combined as I explained before. As for the configuration options, Again, we have the endpoint in the URL field. But apart from that, everything else is mostly unchanged. Um, there was information that we wanted re regarding the thumbnail, which was in a different format to the other JSON name strings. So what we had was our thumbnail header here in between, in between the column headers that we wanted. So we just filtered that separately and union the results together. And there, what we have here with some more data cleaning, is a list of all the videos that were um, posted about NRL Supercoach in descending order, so the most recent up the top. And we also have an image of the, the thumbnail. So, what we have now is a third example of the Zomato headers example. So in our introduction to slides, what I mentioned was that there is instances where you might need to use the headers in the, in the download tool. So what we have to start off with is a street address. The purpose of this Zomato example was to, was to find a longitude and latitude location and use that location to find the, the top rated restaurant in that area. So what we can show in this example is the first part of the workflow here is just generating the longitude and latitude for that street address there using a geocoding tool. We then have the link to the, the API and we also have a user key in a separate column. And we append that user key and that latitude and longitude together in order to have a single column there which we can use to create the URL using the command and latitude and longitude um, string concatenation. We then go into the download tool itself. So for the basic configurations, they're, they're unchanged. We ne can now see that we have um, a field variable called user key, which will be used for the acceptance of the download tool in order to gain the data back from the Zomato API. 
So the remainder of this workflow will be JSON parsing that information that we got out from the download tool, but that's going to be just its own process. And for our example, we, we put some spatial analytics and some data preparation, but we can see the, the download process taking into effect. So since we've covered API calling at the moment, the next topic that we'd like to get into is web scraping. So this can also be done throughout the data launcher. So there's a slightly different process for web scraping. First, what we'd want to do is go into the web cage that we'd want to scrape. And to keep the NRL Supercoach theme, I got some information about player prices and um, a performance metric of the, of the players into um, a web page like this. So the first thing that we want to do is open the, the developer tools. So if we click on this triple dots, small tools, developer tools, an interface like this will pop up on the left hand, on the right hand side of the page. What you're supposed to be able to do is highlight over an area that gives it, that gives the HTML code, but you can also use the drop down, the drop down here in order to highlight where the HTML code is. So for our example, we want to have a look at the body. We want to open up this div style here, which contains our information. We want to keep opening it up, keep opening it up until what we get is a single line of single line of code. And then we've got we've got up to the text table itself. Here we've got the table. Get some more body. Okay, there. So what we have here is a SQL line of HTML, which we'll need to pass out. For um, our purposes, what you can do is, is copy this HTML by right-clicking, copy, and you can copy the element, and you can paste that into a separate Word document in order to preserve the HTML. So the next step of the process is to go back into Alteryx and put that URL link into the text input tool. And following that to use the download tool again the download tool is defaulted just so that you have to put the url link into the link but differently from the other processes what we have is the text to columns tool so a unique feature of the text to columns tool is that you're able to split you're able to split your data into rows and using the the that command that delimiter there you can actually split it into every new line of, of code. So instead of having in the input just one big blob of data, we split it into 672 rows so we can have a look and observe the metadata more clearly and pick which, which fields we want. But for this example, we also noticed that that um, greater than delimiter was also within the code, so we wanted to further split it by that make it easier for us to pass the columns which we, which we wanted. Something that we noticed within the HTML code was that this nozzle appeared in the in the lines where there was information which we wanted. So we can give an example. So what we had was a list of numbers. List of numbers, so I guess we can show it in this example better. So we had the price tag at the end there. We had some other numbers which would be important for analysis. Yeah. So in two weeks' time, what we'll have is Ivy. She'll be covering this tool over here, which is also a string parsing tool, but it's known as Regex. So if you're interested to learn more about string parsing, you can attend her Thursday training session in two weeks. But again, this process is mainly unchanged. What we have is connecting the data using the join tool of these two different strings that we separated for convenience. And then we joined it to separate data that we had. So one of my, objecti one of my objectives from the beginning was to demonstrate how easy it is to use data collected from the download tool to add context. And to support that, as I mentioned, I did download separate supercoach data that I downloaded from different source and then fed it in. 
And then what we did was do some prescriptive analytics on the process. So the actual prescriptive analytics isn't so important, but I used an optimization tool with some data preparation with some very strict formats. And I answered a, a business question which I had for my super coach was which players would I have to maximize the score that I get in the game? So yeah, optimization is one of my favorite tools, but not important for this training session here. But it's important to know that this optimization tool really has some strict formats into each of the inputs here. And the downloaded data suffice perfectly in order to make this process happen. So overall, I'd say that Alteryx has the functionality for businesses to download data from a web page or from an API. Today we have covered simple examples of these processes, but there are instances where it can be more complex, such as involving bearer codes or needing to generate refresh tokens. And this would potentially be used in conjunction with the Python tool. This process would usually be more complicated, not from accessing publicly available data, but more so for privately available data. So I hope you enjoyed my web scraping and API calling today with a download tool. If you have any questions, um, I'll be answering them now. So yeah, leave your questions in the, in the chat.